So my talk today is called 21st Century Engineering to the Extreme. And what I want to try to convince you of is that you all are cyborgs whether you know it or not. Now you may not believe me, so how many of you believe me that, that you're a bunch of cyborgs? Does anybody believe me? Thumbs up, thumbs down? Do you have any thumbs up for cyborgs? No. Any thumbs down? Thumbs down. All right. Does everybody know what this is? Bet you have one of these. A smartphone, right? I bet when you're walking down the street, you're doing one of these things, yeah? Kind of checking out the messaging situation, maybe going on Facebook in the extreme, maybe seeing if mom or dad have a text message for you to pick up something from uh, the store on the way home. Um, but I bet you cannot disconnect yourself from this thing. You're walking down the street doing one of these, just like these folks in my slide over here, okay? Well, there's a very, uh, a very famous sociologist in the U.S. who maintains that we have crossed the boundary now and we are cyborgs. We are human machines because we are inseparable from our cell phones and unfortunately I have to say as an engineer I'm responsible for this thing here that's turning you into a cyborg. So if that's if that's frightening to you or that's exciting to you then maybe you should consider being an engineer somewhere down the road in your future. Okay so let's get back to this little thing here. What's the coolest feature that's in this thing? Um, does anybody want to pipe in over the microphone and tell me what they think is the coolest feature on a smartphone? Anybody? No? Unmute. Unmute. Somebody want to unmute and tell us what the coolest thing on their smartphone is? Okay, that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some of the cool things that some of the students that I've talked to here in the Sydney area tell me about smartphones. And one of the coolest things is that they can play games on it that uh, they could touch the screen and it lets them play a game. They don't need a, uh, a joystick, they don't need any keyboard. And that uses a technology called haptic technology that was only invented in your lifetime. So before you were born there was no haptic technology. That's brand new, never existed before, just in your lifetime. Another one of the cool things that's in the smartphone is that when you put uh, photographs in it or you just want to turn and play a game with a bigger screen uh, aspect ratio instead of upright you want it to be more landscape um, that's because of a structure inside there a circuit inside there called a MEMS a micro electrical mechanical machine and before you were born MEMS just didn't exist that's a brand new technology that came into existence in the last 15, 16, 17 years so there's a whole bunch of other technologies in this smartphone one of them is a wireless LAN I'll talk about that in a little bit uh, Wi-Fi, I'll talk about that a little bit more shortly, but none of those technologies existed before you were born. So in just your lifetime, the majority of the technologies necessary for you to have a smartphone were invented. And so that means if you're going to have a 40 or 50 year working career, that technology is going to change at least two times over in your career. So not only are you going to invent a brand new technology, but you're going to get to see that technology become obsolete or go away. You're going to have to invent a brand new technology and see that one go away before you ever retire. And if uh, what the experts tell us is true, that's going to accelerate even more. So there may be three generations of technology which are going to come into existence and disappear during the course of your working career. And engineers are the people responsible for making those things happen, both the creation of those new technologies and those disappearing. And if that gets you excited, then maybe you should consider being an engineer. Okay, so the rest of the agenda for the talk goes like this. I'm going to talk about the what, who, where, and how of becoming an engineer. And maybe you didn't know about it. Maybe the fact that I'm not talking to you with an Australian accent tipped it off. But Australia doesn't graduate nearly as many engineers as the United States. So it has to import people like me. So I apologize if you can't understand me. I thank you for trying to speak the American language instead of Australian. But maybe if enough people like you decide to come and study engineering, the next time somebody gives this talk, they'll be doing it in Strine instead of American. Okay? So we need to get more Aussie engineers so you won't have to listen to me. As much as I enjoy doing this, I'm sure you don't want to listen to me doing it. All right. So another question before we really get rolling. Who do you follow in the news and the media as heroes? 
Um, I know you're having trouble with your mute button, so maybe I'll give you a few answers and you can nod your head. How many of you follow like Hugh Jackman or Nicole Kidman or uh, Matthew, what's his name, who seems to be in the news a lot lately? Uh, Matthew Clark. Any wow. of those people? Michael Clark. No, Michael Clark as well, yeah. Any of those people you follow? No, yes. Okay. Um, some people tell me they follow Julia Gillard, which is okay, or Tony Abbott, which is okay. Some people follow media stars. Some people follow um, music uh, musicians. Some people follow uh, uh, people in, the, uh, in movies and TV and those sorts of things. Um, those are the people that you would go to uh, follow their tweets or you'd check out what's going on with them uh, if you get online. Um, but then if you flip the question around and say, what are the other things that you're really concerned about? What things would you follow if you opened up the news or uh, went to watch the TV news? Uh, people often tell me, or people your age tell me things like climate change um, or uh, carbon tax or um, famine in sub-Saharan Africa or clean water, uh, cars that don't pollute. Those are all the things that uh, people your age are really interested in big world problems and if you go and look at the two the two groups of things the people you follow and the problems that you think are pretty significant are any of those people that you follow going to solve any of those big problems well uh, Julia Gillard or Tony Abbott may devote a whole lot of the government's money to solving those problems but they're really not going to solve them at all and I don't think Michael Clark getting a double century in a cricket match is going to change anything in the world that really matters um, unless you have a big shouting match with somebody in South Africa right now um, might change things a little bit but none of the real big problems that the world is facing that your generation is facing are going to be solved by any of the people that are typically followed in the media and the people who are going to change those things or solve those problems are scientists and engineers okay so what do engineers do? I've been talking a lot about this little thing here I've been talking about the problems of the world but what do engineers really do? Now I could see from the from the video feed that I'm getting that you're probably in your upper teen years, upper high school years. Um, when I go and do this talk for the kids in kindy or years one or two, and they hear that an engineer is coming, they always want to know where's the train, where's the locomotive? Because certainly, if I'm an engineer, I must have driven my train here today. But back 150 years ago, when trains were really new, it took one, two, or three even three engineers to drive a train because they were so complicated in terms of the technology of the day and that sort of gives you a hint about what engineers do we take technology and we try to mold it and use it in a useful way um, unfortunately today in the modern age I don't get to drive a locomotive it would have helped me get here this morning I arrived just a few minutes late because another invention the GPS didn't work so good today Okay, so what do engineers do? Well, we basically, as I've already demonstrated to you, we change the world in your lifetime. Okay? And we're going to change it many times over. You're going to change it many times over in your lifetime as well. Okay? So engineers design stuff. We talked about the smartphone already. When you were born, this was the state of the art for the smartphone. It looks kind of lame. It's got one of these things sticking out of it, an antenna. Now it's built in. We couldn't fit everything into the, this size so we had to have it fold out. Now we can cram in a whole bunch more stuff including a whole computer. And another one of the things that's changed dramatically in your lifetime is computing power. When you were born the state-of-the-art supercomputer used for predicting the weather or designing things like uh, new, new aircraft uh, was uh, something that filled up a whole room and basically could heat your house and your neighbor's house all winter long and now that same computing power you can go to Target or Amazon.com and buy in the form of an Xbox or a Wii for about $350. In fact this has more computing power than this supercomputer did when you were born. So just in your lifetime a whole room versus of electronics versus something that you actually play games with. That's what engineers do. Okay, and engineers can also do beautiful things. Of course, this wasn't built in your lifetime, but it is a very beautiful, iconic piece of Australia that the world really recognizes and knows about. This was designed by engineers, 
And I would imagine that the engineers who designed this are going to be pretty shocked to find out that it's still working and it's still carrying the majority of Sydney's traffic, both uh, automobile and train, from the north side of Sydney to the south side of Sydney. Uh, but when this was built, it was okay to have, let's say, 30 people die in the course of building that. And that's what society thought was okay, and that's what society told engineers was all right if you wanted to build a, a bridge. It was okay to have 30 people die. Not that many people died. I think it was only about three. So it was a very safe project. But today, a modern bridge built between Spain and Portugal, the goal was to have zero people die because society said it's no longer acceptable that people die when we build major projects. So engineers are also, in, in addition to changing basic technologies, engineers also have to adapt to the rules of changing society. So it's okay to kill people <laughs> to build a bridge. Now it's not okay to kill people. Okay, and engineers design cool stuff. When you were born, state-of-the-art medical equipment is the MRI where you had to go inside this long tube and maybe you've had to do that already because they're still around. Today at Macquarie University one of the projects I'm working on is to build the same piece of equipment but have it be implantable inside your body. So after you go get a major operation we're gonna put a little tiny piece of electronics let me see if I have something about the right size. Yeah, about the size of this 10 cent piece the doctor is gonna leave something about this big inside of you so that it could take the very same pictures that this MRI would do, but it's just a tiny little thing that goes inside of you and maybe even someday it'll be able to go and fix things that the doctor or surgeon missed when he was operating on you. So that's kind of cool. That's going to happen in your lifetime as well and that'll be obsolete again before you even get done with your careers. Okay, I told you I'd come back to Wi-Fi. Everybody have one of these in their home? Anybody have a Wi-Fi in their home? Hand raising? Yeah, okay. Pretty cool stuff. Back when you were born, you used to plug into the wall. You used to buy a cable. Maybe you even remember that. Now we can connect with Wi-Fi. And one of the reasons why I'm in Australia, I'm a wireless engineer. I design the chips inside of smartphones or inside of that medical implant that make Wi-Fi possible. Um, but one of the reasons why I'm in Australia is that the university that I work at, Macquarie University, in cooperation with CSIRO, invented Wi-Fi. And these two guys are actually friends of mine, Dr. David Skellern and Dr. Neil Westy. They started a company after working with CSIRO to commercialize the first Wi-Fi system in the year 2000. So that was all done at Macquarie University. And Macquarie University continues to be a world-known center for wireless research. And that's why a crazy American is here in Australia talking about engineering or crazy American, yeah, crazy Americans here in Australia. Okay, that's all fine and good. I gave you a lot of examples, but what do engineers really do? If you really want to be an engineer, what are we talking about? Well, engineering is about design. So if you're a creative person, if you find yourself coming up with solutions to problems, if you like mysteries, if you like puzzles, it's also about problem solving. And what we really want to do, a lot of people think engineering is all about maths and all about physics and chemistry and science and that stuff is all fine and good but at the end of the day as an engineer I'm here to tell you you don't do an awful lot of maths and physics and chemistry what we do a lot of is problem solving and so when we teach you to be an engineer at uni what we want you to come away with is the really good set of skills to ask great questions and come up with ways to come up with great problems. So we like to summarize all that by saying that as an engineer, you need to learn the art of asking why very well. You need to ask good questions and you need to figure out ways to get good answers to those questions through design and problem solving. And that at the very heart of it is what engineering is all about. Yes, there's some maths and there's some physics. We'll teach you that at uni if you haven't gotten it in high school, so don't worry, don't panic. But if you're really good at problem solving and you love designing things, you like getting to the bottom of a problem and finding out what's going on, what causes it, and what are possible solutions to that problem, then maybe engineering is something you should consider. Okay, so some of the skills of people who like to do engineering I've listed here, a lot of it is about working in teams. Um, people have this crazy notion that engineers or scientists work in white lab coats all by themselves, maybe huddled over a keyboard hacking code or 
uh, you know, pouring liquids from one test tube to another, and that may happen some of the time, but in reality, the most important thing about solving big problems is that you bring in the right people to solve all those big problems, which means that engineering is not an individual sport, but it's a team sport. And engineers like to work together in teams, and engineers like to have a lot of fun doing it. So if these are some of the things that you would write down about yourself, you're curious, you uh, like to work in teams, you have good communication skills, you can see a problem through to the end, you're resilient. If those are some of the things that describe you, then maybe you should consider being an engineer. Okay, so now we're going to play the engineering game. Who's the engineer? Everybody know who this guy is? Raise your hand if you know who this guy is. Yeah, okay. Albert Einstein won a few Nobel Prizes. I think he won... Oh, we have sound. I can hear you guys now. All right. Albert Einstein won a couple Nobel Prizes. Not the dumbest guy on the block, but is he an engineer? Does he qualify to be an engineer? Everybody who thinks he's an engineer, raise your hand. Everybody who thinks he's just a scientist, raise your other hand. Just a scientist. Okay, well... After a long day of doing calculations, Albert and his buddies wanted a cold soft drink and they couldn't get one because of the middle of summer in Germany or Switzerland, depending upon where he was living. And so he and a couple of his physicist buddies invented one of the first refrigerators that could work inside your house. So he actually has a patent, a patent, on the refrigerator. The only problem with Albert's refrigerator is that it used a substance called ammonia in very, very large quantities. And if there was a small leak of that ammonia, well, everybody would wake up dead the next morning in the house. So while he was able to create a very small and useful size refrigerator, it wasn't practical. But he did get a patent for it, and so I've included him in the Hall of Fame of Engineers. All right. Are these guys engineers? Everybody know who Mythbusters are? Hand up for Mythbusters. Okay. Okay, thanks for letting us know. All right. Uh, I got a picture of the Mythbusters up here. Is, it, is that working now? Is that better? Can you see it now? Yeah, we can. You see him standing in front of a screen. No, we can, we can only see a black screen where he is, I think. Okay. So, how's that? Yeah, he's back now. Thank you. Okay, everybody see the Mythbusters now. And just one minute. Yeah. So, someone's still got their microphone on. Just make sure that you've muted your microphone, please. Thank you. All right. Sorry. So, we have our Mythbusters here. We got uh, Jamie. Corey, Kerry, uh, I forget, how can I forget, uh, oh, anyway, Grant, 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 and uh, I forget uh, his name, Adam. Adam, thank you, I didn't have my coffee this morning yet, okay, so the Mythbusters, are these guys engineers, thumbs up for engineers, thumbs down for engineers, okay, well, it turns out that actually, one of them is an engineer, Grant Imahara is actually an engineer, got his degree from University of Southern California. He actually went to my university, so the myth that the Mythbusters are not engineers is busted, because Grant is definitely an engineer. Okay, now I know most of you will not know who this is, okay? Some of, if you have some older teachers or uh, an older mum or dad, this is a famous actress from the 30s and 40s, 1930s and 1940s. Her name is Hedy Lamarr. And rather than keeping you in suspense, I'll tell you that yes, she is an engineer. In the dark days leading up to World War II, she invented a technology called spread spectrum, which was designed to hide the British radar signals from the Germans. And that very same technology is what allows this cell phone to work so that when I make a phone call and you make a phone call, we don't hear each other's call. So the technology that was developed by an actress 
who happened to be an engineer for hiding radar signals now makes cell phones much more useful. Okay, so there's the cell phone technology that Hedy Lamar enabled. So you should Wikipedia Hedy Lamar. She's a fascinating lady. Okay, this guy, everybody knows Mr. Bean, Roland Atkinson. Is he an engineer? Well, if you've been playing along at school, you know the way this game goes already. He's going to be an engineer. And yes, in fact, he has a Bachelor of Engineering degree from Oxford. Okay? Doesn't sound like one of your better schools, does it? But he is, in fact, an engineer. Okay. And, as a matter of fact, you can become engineers if you'd like. If you go to this website in particular, or you go to YouTube, and you look up uh, a trailer for a movie called I, Wombat, an Australian robotic story, you could see a group of uh, Australian teenagers, Australian high schoolers, who in 54 days built a robot that was over a meter high and weighed more than 50 kilograms and then took that robot to the United States and competed from teams or competed with teams all around the world. So for 54 days, sorry, 44 days, they were engineers. They did all the things engineers did. They learned everything about how you engineer robots, the mechanical engineering, the electrical engineering, the software engineering, and they successfully executed their engineering project and they did that all here in Australia. You can go see their story and if you want the complete DVD just send me an email and I can send that to you as well. So you can be engineers today right now. And if you want to do it at a small scale you could do it with Lego. Go to www.ozfll.org. There's about 200 schools around Australia doing that right now as well. Okay, so how do you become an engineer? Well, general requirements Unfortunately, you're going to need some math and you're going to need some science, but if you don't get a whole lot, don't worry about it. We have programs at all the universities here that can help you bridge into the necessary maths and science that you need. Um, the most important thing is that you really love a good problem. You really love designing things, not necessarily technical things, but you love making up new things. You like mysteries, you like problem solving, you like finding out the root of a difficult problem or the root of why something went wrong. And if you have a chance to do something technical for your year 10 experience, even if it's taking apart car motors and putting them back together again, that's a great, great thing to do as a foundation for going to uni to study engineering. Okay, so to wrap it all up, why don't you come change the world with us, become an engineer. It's a lot of fun.